We're going to talk about Titus. Uh, one of the epistles that Paul wrote was to Titus when he was on the island of Crete. And that's going to be our next Bible bowl. If we get to the Bible bowl, we'll, we'll be taking a test on Titus. And we'll be looking at that. Before we get into the Titus the book, I thought it would be good to talk about Titus the man. Do you know anyone named Titus? Know anyone? I think of Titus Ward. Yeah, the preacher, Titus Ward. wonder why he became a preacher. I don't know what his mama was thinking when she named him Titus. Uh, it's a good name. I don't know many named Titus. Maybe there's more than I um, thinking of, but I can just imagine uh, sort of a nice type woman naming her little babies. I'm going to name you Titus. And uh, she may have known something about this Titus we're going to talk about. And to grow up with a name like that, it kind of sets the, uh, well, sort of sets Titus before you as an example, doesn't it? I mean, what if you grew up with the name Titus and you read about Titus and Paul says he's my partner and fellow helper. He's among our brethren. He's a messenger of the churches. Why, well, he's the glory of Christ. That'd be a good way for a little boy to grow up. Thank you. That, that's who Titus was. And that's who I am. I'm Titus. I'm going to be that way. And maybe that's what went through uh, the mind of Titus Ward. And maybe that's why he's a preacher. Because his mother instilled those things in him from a child, knowing the Holy Scriptures. Why would you name me Titus, Mama? And she might be able to turn to something like this. So this is what I... This, this is what I read about Titus. I want you to be like that. And so we have these character studies in the Bible. And one of the benefits of these character studies is to, we can learn from good and bad examples to see what we ought to be and ought not to be. But there's so much good about Titus. Now let me kind of give you a chronological view of his life. We read in Titus chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, and I got it all on here. Paul's writing the epistle, but he gets on down in verse 4, and he tells him, this is to Titus. And he calls him my own son after the common faith. Paul and Titus had the same faith, the common faith. And when he refers to him as my own son, we know that's not literally his son, not in the flesh, but he had followed Paul spiritually. And as we read with Timothy, he calls him my own beloved son. And now Titus, my own son in the common faith. Well, it makes us think that it's probably likely Paul would say this because Paul had been the one to teach Titus the gospel and maybe baptized him in the Christ and then mentored him as a young man into this great man that he became. When would that have happened and how would that happen? Well, we're going to start off. Here's a map I'm looking at. And if you're looking at the map in the back of your Bible, you might find Antioch of Syria and then look down at Jerusalem and on the map on the board up here, I've got an arrow drawn straight down from Antioch to Jerusalem. And this is the first time we read of Titus. He's making this journey with Paul. Now, Titus is not mentioned in the book of Acts. That seems kind of strange. He's mentioned in the epistles. But the book of Acts gives us the historical context and background to what we read about Titus in the epistles. And in Acts chapter 11, verses 19 through 21, we read that they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose after Stephen traveled as far as Phoenice and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the gospel to none but the Jews only. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. Word got back to Jerusalem about what was happening in Antioch. Now we need to send someone up there and, and see what's going on. Barnabas goes to Antioch. 
sees a great work being done, bringing Gentiles into the church, just like the Jews. And Barnabas says, I need some help. And he sent over to Tarsus and brought Paul. And in his name, he's called Saul now. Saul and Barnabas spent about a year teaching that church in Antioch. And it's during that time where it says that the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. It may have been after Paul arrived. Now we're kind of filling in between the lines here, but, but it fits the storyline that after Paul arrived, he finds Titus. Titus is listening. He decides, I'm going to be a Christian too, and is baptized into Christ. And so we read that Paul went on his missionary journey. And when he returned to Antioch, there was problems between the Jews and the Gentiles. Acts chapter 15, 1 through 5. Certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. Where therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them. Now notice that. Titus is going to be in those certain other of them. I'll show you in just a minute. Certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church. Now here goes Titus. He's with Paul. I'll show you that in a minute. But right now just follow this. Take my word for it. It says being brought on their way by the church. They passed through Phoenice and Samaria. Declaring the conversion of the Gentiles. And they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem. They were received of the church and of the apostles and elders. And they declared all things that God had done with them. But there arose certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and command them to keep the law of Moses. Titus went with Paul. Titus was one of those that brought great joy to those churches. So we've been baptizing Gentiles into Christ. Look, here's one of them, Titus. He's exhibit number one. As we read in Galatians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, Paul writes about this to the churches of Galatia and says, 14 years afterward, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them the gospel which I preached among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should have run or had run in vain. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. Yeah, I didn't say Paul. You say they got to be circumcised. Well, what about Titus? You, you going to tell him he's got to be circumcised? Is, is he not, is he not, a, and it makes you think Titus must have been known by the churches then. They must have had some, must have been some man of reputation that the very fact that here he is as a member of the church and working in the church and helping Paul, and he's not circumcised. Why are you saying the Greeks have to be circumcised? There's Titus. It tells us early on that Paul thought he could depend on Titus in a time of controversy and trouble in the church. And Titus early on must have been watching and learning. This is how you deal with problems in the church. Because Paul's going to use him in other problems that arise as we read through the New Testament. I've got the map up again. If you're in the, looking at your Bibles, the map in the back, look where it has Ephesus. I have an arrow drawn from Ephesus going west to Corinth. And then another arrow drawn from Corinth going north to Philippi. In fact, if you're looking at the map at the back of your Bible, you have a better map than the one I have up here. They've got Corinth in the wrong place. You see where Corinth is? That's not where, uh, where Corinth is. Uh, that's where Decapolis is. And I'll show you that. Uh, not Decapolis. Um, I'll tell you later, tell you later where, where that place is. But they got Corinth in the wrong place. But it's the end of that arrow, end of that first arrow. That's where Corinth is. And so Paul, when he came to Ephesus, heard word from the Corinthians, there's trouble. 
And so he, he had a letter, and he sent it to the Corinthians. And then he got to wondering, how did they receive that? He sent Titus. Titus, go check on the church at Corinth. And then you meet me at Troas. I'm going to make my way out of here. And, and as I do, you meet up with me at Troas and tell me how the church is doing. And Paul got to Troas and Titus isn't there. And it really troubled Paul. He goes on up into Macedonia and that's where Philippi is. And that's where Titus shows up. And when Titus shows up, in uh, Macedonia with Paul. It just changed Paul. He was so thrilled with the report that Titus gave. And so he wrote a second letter, 2 Corinthians, and then sent that down to Corinth. And we read more about Titus in 2 Corinthians than we do in any other part of the New Testament. Let's look what it says. 2 Corinthians 2, 12-13. Furthermore, when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel and the door was opened unto me of the Lord, I had no rest in my spirit because I found not Titus my brother. But taking my leave of them, I went up from thence into Macedonia. Titus my brother. And we're going to see from this that the heart of Titus was just right parallel to the heart of Paul. Just like, almost like they had grown up as brothers. They were so together in the, the way they fought, fought and the way they felt about things. Titus, my brother. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 5 through 7, when we were coming to Macedonia, now that's up there where Philippi is, our flesh had no rest. We were troubled on every side. Without were fightings. Within were fears. Paul's telling you, these, you Corinthians, I was just upset. I was worried about you. Nevertheless, God that comforted those that are cast down comforted us by the coming of Titus. And not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you. When he told us your earnest desire, your mourning, your fervent mind toward me, so that I rejoice the more. Titus got to Corinth. He saw the situation. It comforted Titus. He got up and met Paul in Macedonia, and it comforted Paul. 2 Corinthians 7, 13 through 16. Therefore, we were comforted in your comfort. Yea, and exceedingly the more joy do we for the joy of Titus. Now that gives you Titus' heart, doesn't it? Found things good in Corinth. They had received that letter that Paul wrote to them well. And now he was joyful about that. And it says, because his spirit was refreshed by you all. For if I had boasted anything of him to you, I'm not ashamed. But as we spake all things to you in truth, even so our boasting, which I made before Titus, is found in truth. He told Titus, Titus, here's, I think y'all expect something good out of this. Y'all expect this and that. Tit and bragging on them, Titus got there. That's what he found. And it was good. And Paul's, I'm glad I bragged on you. And Titus found it just like I said it'd be with you all. And then in verse 15, in his inward affection is the more abundant toward you, whilst he remembered the obedience of you all. How with fear and trembling ye received him. I rejoice, therefore, that I have confidence in you in all things. The emotions and the heart of Titus and Paul running right alongside each other here. 2 Corinthians 8, verse 6, and then 16 and 17. Titus had something else to do. Now you find out how they're doing spiritually. But also remind them, Titus, they promised me that they were going to lay aside money on the first day of every week and put it in store so that when I come, there'd be no gathering and I can take that to Jerusalem. And you need to go down there and make sure they're doing that. And so in 2 Corinthians 8, in verse 6, inasmuch as we desired Titus, he's the one I wanted. I wanted Titus to go see you. 
We desired Titus that as he had begun, so he would also finish in you this same grace also. This is that grace of giving that they were to do. Down in verse 16 and 17. But thanks be to God which birthed the same earnest care into the heart of Titus for you. See how Titus, Titus loved that troubled church? He says, for indeed he accepted the exhortation, but being more forward of his own accord, he went into you. You didn't have to beg Titus to go. Didn't have to order him, Titus, I think they need you. Titus says, I'm going. I'll go do that work, Paul, and I'll report back to you. 2 Corinthians 8 in verse 23. Whether any do require, inquire of Titus. Here's who he is. Here's what Paul thought of him. He is my partner and fellow helper. Those are two different words, and they're not really similar, but they're similar in meaning. That partner has to do with the, it's very close to that word koinonia, translated fellowship. But he's right with me. He, he's just like, like we're partners in a business. And that's what this second, this fellow helpers, like, almost like a business partner here. But this is how religious things. And again, I want you to show you how close their hearts and their desires and their minds are in their work. They're a good team. And they, they kind of understand one another. And they're the same on these things. He goes on and says, Our brethren be inquired of, they are the messengers of the churches. That's what Titus could do. Paul would send messengers out, get a report from the church, bring it back, send them this message. I'll send it by way of Titus. He'll report back, coming back. That's one of the jobs that Titus had. But then it says this, he's the glory of Christ. I'm going to return to that at the end. And we'll talk about what that means. And then 2 Corinthians 12, 17 and 18 showed us Titus wasn't in this for his own benefit. Titus is working out of love. We know how much Paul sacrificed that he might be a preacher, and he wasn't being a preacher for the money he could make, and neither was Titus. Did I make gain of you by any of them who I sent unto you? 2 Corinthians 12, 17 and 18. I desired Titus. I wanted him to do this. And with him I sent a brother. Did Titus make gain of you? Walked we not in the same spirit? Walked we not in the same steps? Titus had no financial interest in serving the churches. He was doing it out of the love he had for his Lord Jesus Christ and was glad to be able to do this to the churches just like Paul was doing. Now the book of Titus. We find Titus in Crete. And it sounds like he had accompanied Paul there after Paul's first imprisonment in Rome. And so Paul writes the letter to Titus, my own son after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. For this cause I left thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting and ordain elders in every city, as I had appointed thee. That's a big responsibility. Who do you trust something like that with? Paul and Titus get there, and Paul says, Titus, I've got to move on, but you stay here. You set these things in order. Look, I'll, I'll send you a letter. You can use that letter as part of your credentials. Let them know, yeah, Paul's wanting me to do this, and you can do this, Titus. I've seen you deal with troubles in the church all the way from Jerusalem to Corinth, and I know you can handle this, so I'm going to leave you in Crete to take care of this. We'll be studying that letter in detail as we go through these on Sunday nights, but another reference right here at the end that kind of gives us a timeline or a geographic line for Titus. Paul says, when I send Artemis unto thee, or Tychicus, one of those are going to come relieve Titus, be diligent to come to me into Nicopolis. Come to Nicopolis, for I've determined there to winter. Okay, here's the map. Here's the map. He was to go from Crete 
to Nicopolis. Now that's where Corinth shows on my map. If you're looking at that map in your uh, back of your Bible out there in your car, and if you find Athens, and you take a line and you go all the way across the peninsula to the other side, that's where Nicopolis would be. It's labeled wrong on this map. I noticed after I put this up, but uh, that's where Decapolis would be. So now I'm, I, you meet up, I'll be traveling, but I plan to spend the winter in Decapolis, and you meet me there. Okay, we don't know this, but here's, the, here's a likely scenario that took place. Whether Paul got to Decapolis or not, we don't know. But instead of wintering in Decapolis, Paul is taken prisoner and he is imprisoned in Rome. And so Titus leaves Crete. He's supposed to meet Paul at Decapolis. He gets there so well, he's not here. Well, where's Paul? Well, they, they got him. They took him to Rome. He's a prisoner. And then Titus says... Well, I'm going there to see him there. And the way we know this is because of the last reference we have in 2 Timothy 4 and verse 10. And this is where it says, Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. And so we infer from this. It doesn't, doesn't spell it all out in black and white, but our inference is that after he left Crete, he made it to Rome to see Paul. And he got there with Paul after a visit. Titus, I tell you what you need to do before winter comes, you need to get to, the, to uh, Dalmatia. You've got some work to do there and laid that work out. And Titus goes on that. And that's the last we read of Titus heading out across the sea Again, disappearing from us in the scenes of scriptures, headed to Dalmatia to do his work. Let me show you Dalmatia. That's this way, going up into that area. You've heard of Dalmatia, haven't you? Have you heard of Dalmatians? The dog, the old big old spotted dog? Well, that, that, they bred that dog, and that dog originated there in Dalmatia, in that part of the, part of the world, that big spotted dog. Uh, you know, the dog that rides around on the fire engine barking. You know, that's the, that, that's the Dalmatian. And so they named that for Dalmatia. But before they had the dogs there, they had Titus there doing his work. Well, it's a good send-off, isn't it? Seeing Titus depart from Paul, catching that ship, heading out to continue to do the Lord's work. Now, Titus the man. Let's get back to this in 2 Corinthians 8 in verse 23. A fellow helper, a partner, a brother, a messenger of the churches. But look at that. The glory of Christ. I don't know any higher compliment. You could pay someone to say, You are the glory of Christ. Paul would say... I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. When you study the life of Paul, you're seeing the glory of Christ in a man. It, it's as though Christ himself looks at Paul and would say, I glory in him. He's the kind of man that... Uh, that we need that we need this world needs to be filled with. That's what I expected when I died on the cross so that men can become Christians and mature into that kind of man. And Paul says, Titus, that's the kind of man you are. The way you do your work, Titus, the work you choose to do, the unselfish attitude you have, the love you have for others, the diligence that you have, and the fact that you can take responsibility and can be trusted with that, you're the glory of Christ. Well, I would suspect that uh, Titus Ward heard that. I look at Titus Ward and I think of who he is and the reputation he has and the work he's done. He's the glory of Christ, isn't he? Well, I look at us too. 
I see some of you all. I see the glory of Christ in you. And, and that's what I want you to see in me. I want my life to be that way. So that people can say, you know, he's just the glory of Christ by the way that, that he goes about his work and what he does and where his heart is. And that's where we all ought to aspire. To be like Titus and to be like Paul because they were like Christ. And show what Christ can do with our lives and live our lives in a way that brings glory to him and that Christ himself will glory in. Well, let's extend the invitation. If you want to be the glory of Christ, then you need to be baptized into Christ. And, and, and like Titus, become a Christian. The disciples were called Christians first in Antioch, and that's where we first pick up our trail of Titus. Probably he's one of those. When it says the disciples were called Christians, they're talking about people like Titus. He's one of those disciples that was called a Christian. And that's what we need to be. And so I extend the invitation, as I always do, and if you're not, if you are a Christian and you've fallen away, get it right and live in such a way that brings glory to Christ and his work. Now let's sing this invitation song.